All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, last week uh, we wrapped up the Noahic Covenant, and this morning we're going to start the Abrahamic Covenant. It's going to take us probably at least two weeks to get through this, um, but it'll be a good two weeks, I assure you. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and open with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your Lord's Day. Uh, how refreshing it was to have a cool breeze this morning. We look forward uh, to that. I hope that it continues throughout the day. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you for your word. We pray that as we um, examine and study the Noahic Covenant, we would learn more about you, more about your grace. Um, and we thank you for your confession that speaks so clearly of it. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right, now, I think sometimes... It can seem a little overwhelming when you get into these bigger covenants. I mean, you got people changing their names, you got circumcisions, promises of God, curses, blessings, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, right? But don't worry, uh, when it comes to the Abrahamic covenant, your big chapters are going to be 12, 15, and 17. And within the Abrahamic covenant, the first topic we need to address is the call of Abram, and as he's known at this point. And I'm going to try very hard to use that name. I'm probably going to slip a couple times and say Abraham, but um, at this point he's known as Abram. It's here the covenant begins and uh, the promises of God uh, are laid forth. So let's begin at the beginning, shall we? Uh, in, we're in Genesis 12. In his calling of Abram, God reveals he has a plan, uh, a plan for the universe and reveals the direction of history as we know it. At this point, okay, these verses that we're about to read are pivotal, not just in redemptive history, but really for the world over. Okay, God is shaping history.